is uh, how far can I travel? It's on freemaptools.com. It's got a whole bunch of different drop downs. You can enter that information that we, we try to pull out of the uh, forensic site on the vehicle. And uh, <coughs> once you drop it in there, it'll populate a map giving you the options to include highways, avoid highways, avoid toll roads, um, and kind of show the route. So we can see in that time since the escape and when I caught wind of the story, the, uh, the zone got pretty large already. So recap your tools there. You got the Google Maps traffic layer, uh, the Burla vehicle lookup for vehicle specs, and how far can I travel the map. So at this point, I think I'm caught up uh, to where the story probably is. You know, we're obviously still looking for the, the fugitives, um, but we know where they were, where they could be based on the map, what they're driving, and what they look like based on the uh, bolo. So, you know, cool, now what? I'm just realizing I don't think I have a single attractive person in my slide deck. <laughs> All right, so next we're gonna go after uh, information flow. Uh, I mentioned this earlier, but who's following the, the story? Um, in the morning, I went back and backtracked uh, how, how many different stories came out about it. Um, and a local news affiliate um, there in Georgia was the first one that broke it about, I think, 8.30 in the morning. Um, after that, a regional affiliate out in Atlanta um, kicked something out around like 10 o'clock. Um, and then one of the national syndicates, you know, blew a big story out um, to CBS or something uh, about 11:30 when I saw it. Um, so you're going to want to kind of drill into that. You know, go to those local affiliates, um, see if there's a particular reporter that that's reporting on this story, um, and then kind of look and see. Um, sometimes locals in the area will jump on and just start chiming into the comments and and saying you know little bits about where they are because they're real close to the scene. The way I monitor that's with uh, TweetDeck. Um, if you haven't used it before, it's real easy to set up. You do have to log in through a, a signed in Twitter account. So if you're not cool with that, use a SOC account. Um, once you get in there, um, you make a new search field with the uh, search icon there. And then there's a couple different parameters you can start setting. Um, the one that I set for key keywords was based off the different news articles and everything that were coming up, um, breaking, escape, convict, prisoners, um, civic for the car, manhunt, those were all words I was seeing in the initial stories. So this was grabbing the, the upcoming uh, tweets that were coming out by the reporters. Uh, and then you can also um, make it regional. Um, you can drop a point. So I, I put exactly where the, the bus breakout happened there, gave it a 200 kilometer radius and said go. Um, and then that became my, my news feed uh, during the, the rest of the, the event. Again, this is uh, still about, it's Tuesday the 13th at uh, about 12.30 p.m. at this point. So the other stuff you can uh, get into for that, um, not so much live, but map-based. Um, you can drop uh, the region in with uh, tweet map and do hashtag searches. Um, and then the other one is uh, EchoSec there. Um, and then the last year, app.echosec.net um, launched their free service again. Um, that one's useful enough that I would recommend checking it out. Uh, their paid service is still like 150 bucks a month or something, uh, but the, uh, the free app's not bad. So back to the toolbox. We got TweetDeck, MapD, TweetMap, and uh, EchoSec. Now that we've got the system in place, the next step is gonna be to try to put eyes and ears um, on locations of interest. Um, on the stories that were popping up, we started to see Morgan County, Georgia as a place of interest. There was a lot of police activity reported, um, so they figured that that's where they had moved to. The yellow spot there is, is where the uh, bus situation happened, and that would be Morgan County up in the highlighted area. So how do we go about putting eyes and ears on a new location once we, we know that the information's coming out of that area? One of the best ways, um, when law enforcement's involved, I think, is to jump on Broadcastify. Um, you can go by state and then by county and get a listen to police, fire, and EMS uh, dispatch radios. So if you know where, what county is kind of the hot spot, um, a good way to jump on and just kind of listen up, uh, throw an ear pod in and, and listen while you're doing your other stuff. 
Uh, it's not uncommon to hear um, VIN numbers, license plates, uh, vehicle descriptions, and even addresses that the, uh, the officers are checking out uh, places of interest over those uh, feeds. Um, unless you're doing something to record it, you just gotta be quick and, and run Google searches and stuff in the background. Doing that, we started to uh, catch glimpses of uh, different areas. Um, heard reports that they were looking into Booker Hill Road. Um, we got another, uh, another update from the Athens Clark police that said that the suspects had burglarized a house and had ditched their uh, white prison clothes um, there in Madison, uh, which is still Morgan County. So what we had was locals in the area starting to uh, pique their interest on what all the police activity was about. So we go back to social media and see what we can find. One of my favorite recent uh, tools has been uh, the live, live map on Facebook. Um, it seems like any anytime that the uh, police are out in force, somebody will pop their phone out and start going live. Um, back when all the uh, hurricanes were coming through, some of that footage was insane if you watched the people that were out there live, live tweeting the storms coming in. Um, not the smartest, but pretty impressive. This one's been more recent for me, the uh, Snapchat's uh, Snap Map. Um, you can jump in and see um, posts that people have done publicly in the last 24 hours uh, while they're out there, and it's really just a heat map. Um, if you have uh, Snapchat, I felt like a dummy for not knowing it, but you just squeeze the, the screen and it takes you to the map. Um, light bulb moment for me, never knew that. Uh, as soon as you go into there, please turn on your ghost mode. Uh, that way we're not finding you being a, a creeper watching. Um, I looked this morning and uh, found a whole bunch of uh, bar shenanigans uh, out in downtown Charleston last night. So if you guys were here last night for the trainings and went out, you're probably in there. All right, so you got people on the streets uh, broadcasting live. Um, we started to see some of the uh, police activity in the area. Um, when I dropped into these locations up in Morgan County um, that I was hearing on Broadcastify, um, the one on the upper left was like a car wash, um, and across the street from it was a, a family dollar. And we started to see a whole bunch of people jumping online, live on Facebook. I don't recall the audio, so I think I've got this muted, hopefully. But how close do we think they actually get? Pretty darn close. So from Google Maps Street View, if you've ever dropped a little yellow dude in there, you pretty much get the blue line along the street and you can see the area. Uh, but these guys are literally like walking right up with the cops. The one that was across the street at the, uh, the car wash uh, was earlier than this one, and it was just uh, car after car, um, local sheriffs, uh, FBI vehicles, you know, the, the, all the agencies were, were keyed in at this point uh, because these guys were uh, murderers, basically. So this, this goes on for a while. Um, they actually start to walk behind the building, and there's a ton of police activity behind the, the uh, family dollar. Um, in the woods area back behind there. So it's pretty impressive. You wanna catch a glimpse of, of what's going on. The live map is definitely worth checking out. So at this point, um, I said the, the tactics kinda change when you're behind the story catching up or when you think that you're caught up and you're, you're kinda trying to get ahead of, of the events. Um, we started to see actual media coverage of the area about 5 p.m. All of that Facebook um, material uh, coming out of the, the live maps um, was around four o'clock. So I think at that point we had zeroed in and started looking at things before you know media started you know uh, getting court owned off and, and investigation zones were getting set up. So I think at that point we definitely were ahead of the story. Um, if you start following these active scenario uh, events like this, it's it's really kind of difficult to do. So I was I was pretty pumped up that. I had been into the area and, and seen a bunch of stuff live before um, the authorities got in. Um, another quick recap. Um, 
Broadcastify, the live map from Facebook, the Snapchat Snap Map, um, and then Google Maps Street View to try to just zero into uh, official addresses uh, when you're seeing stuff live. Sadly, day one, the trail pretty much went cold at that point. Um, like I said, that was 5 p.m. I think the uh, evening news ran a bunch of different uh, recaps about the day's events. Um, one of the uh, one of the news companies, uh, Channel 2 there, was doing like, I think they left like a two hour like live stream of aerial footage. There was, um, like I said, heavy police presence behind that family dollar. Um, we had uh, police searching the railroad areas out and around that general area in, in Morgan County. So at that point, the trail's pretty much cold with, uh, with live info coming up. We go back to traditional OSINT and try to fill in the gaps. Um, the OSINT framework is one of those resources I lean on all the time. Um, not so much in the, the live sense, but when you're going back and, and looking for, for what's been going on, um, their criminal records uh, set there has a whole bunch of great resources you can use. Uh, especially if your your targets are um, convicts um, or if they've been arrested in the past and they're they're currently you know free people the the information that gets booked and put on your public record when you get arrested um, is pretty clear again I'm not showing anything based on the criminals because that would probably not be smart uh, but here's just like a redacted uh, SC courts um, archive um, this was actually just a, a business uh, civil type case, but you can see you're, you're going to have names, business names, address, race, sex, year of birth. Um, once you get into a criminal case, you'll actually see like the names of arresting officers and attorneys and stuff. So it's it's a lot of information that you can turn around and and put out into your next OSINT searches. Again, I didn't really go after these guys. But what I found, well, I won't put it in here publicly, but uh, one of them was from Morgan County and the other one I believe was from like middle Tennessee area. So if you think about the path of, of where, which direction they were headed, it makes sense that these guys were going where it was familiar to be. You know, maybe they knew somebody that would help them hide out or, or you know, if they didn't find the first guy's people, they could keep going and, and possibly get to Tennessee. So. Day two um, never really takes off. There's a whole bunch of recap and, and it filled in some of the gaps uh, from the overnight stuff. Um, 2.30 p.m. on Tuesday was actually the last confirmed sighting of the, uh, the green Honda Civic and it was actually leaving the area. This is a Nest webcam that was like hooked right next to the family dollar where all that activity was. Um, it's hard to see but the green Civic, is, this was a video clip and it was pulling out and uh, heading out of the area there. Um, so 2.30 p.m. was the last confirmed sighting for the Green Civic. And then Ebola came out again the next morning saying that the suspects reportedly stole a truck overnight. It was a white work truck. Um, they dropped new plates um, into the details there. The news stories were talking about the, uh, the work truck came from a rock quarry that was 10 miles east of the family dollar situation. So there's the, uh, the map of kind of where we know that they've been at that point, um, starting from the prison bus up to the town, uh, family dollar, and then off to where they, they picked up the, the work truck. Sadly, the, the media coverage stayed pretty thin most of the day. Um, the, the truck they narrowed in that was stolen between 10 and 11 uh, p.m. on Tuesday night. Um, it was reported that there was fuel on site at the quarry, so <coughs> running through the quick uh, forensic uh, tool sets again, um, we see that the, the F-250 super truck had a 30 and a half gallon tank, um, estimated 19 miles a gallon highway, but they had all the gas they needed. So I ran another analysis and now we can see that they're potentially all the way out to the coast or up into Tennessee. Um, and then that tool again has the ability to do using highways and avoiding highways and then showing the actual main routes that they could possibly be on. Um, so that, that one's pretty awesome. I would, I would recommend playing around with that. It's, it's pretty neat. Let's 
so like we said, the, the coverage is pretty thin that day, um, but we start to get random um, pop-up stories about sightings. Um, listening in with uh, Broadcastify again was a good way to try to listen to, to little hot spots that we might be able to, to zero in on. One of them was a, a rest area near Switzerland, South Carolina. Um, I ran it and kind of overlaid it and I said, you know, hey, that makes sense. Maybe they ran out of gas and, you know, got antsy. Um, that would make sense for a sighting, but it, it did get debunked. Um, later in the day, um, there was also a couple <laughs> sightings out in Georgia um, that we debunked. I didn't show those ones on here. Um, but day two, essentially, there, there was no, no major breaks in the story. Um, another Ford Taurus um, that was a potential new uh, vehicle of interest uh, had some people that looked similar to the suspects and you know they got reported the story caught some traction but it, it ended up getting debunked by the authorities and you can actually hear that on Broadcastify if, if you catch the right frequencies um, you'll hear the officers going out and checking an area of interest and then reporting back in and you can you can do your own debunk and say hey the, the officer shot this one down So that would have been all the way through Wednesday. Um, these guys stayed off the radar pretty good. Um, day three was more of the same. There was a lot of press conferences with all the different agencies that were out tracking these guys. Um, you could tell that the, the presence was out there, but they were laying low, obviously, during the day, um, and I think traveling at night. Um, so all, all day three w was pretty much the same. We, we watched traffic, we watched Broadcastify, um, and then about 8 p.m. I caught a blip that said they were spotted in Shelbyville, Tennessee, and within 20 minutes, it was game over. Uh, Bureau of Investigation said that they'd been captured at 8.23 p.m. This is mostly recap from news stories, because I was not able to, to track during the, the end game here, but um, what went down was 2.30, uh, Dubot and Roe broke into a home in Shelbyville, Tennessee. They had made their way all the way up through um, Georgia at that point. Um, they held a couple hostage for several hours, um, ate some of their food. Uh, I believe they had one vehicle that they tried to take off in and it wouldn't start, so they went back in. Um, there was some arguing and stuff, and then they ended up taking a Jeep Cherokee. Um, at the time they left, the couple was able to free themselves from the restraints and uh, dial 911 immediately. The authorities jumped on it. There was a 10 mile highway pursuit there in Shelbyville uh, where the Jeep crashed. Uh, fugitives jumped out, took off on foot through the countryside, tried to run to a nearby house. Um, going through the stories, we found Google Maps and you could pretty much see uh, where they went. Um, just jumped a, a fence over a rural spot, and uh, this is Murica, so they got held at gunpoint until the cops <laughs> showed up. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the last, uh, last couple sequences were, were just bam, 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 because these guys were off the radar. I'm assuming that that was probably by design. I, I don't think the authorities were giving much out to the, uh, to the media, um, so they they were probably trying to keep the investigation under wraps, like we said, with an active case, that's, that's pretty, uh, pretty common. Um, but yeah, these guys, uh, they picked the wrong house and they got popped. Um, they did not put much of a fight up. Uh, I believe the, the gentleman that held them up at gunpoint and the couple that was held hostage but managed to call the authorities um, were some of the people that got some of the reward money that was out for these guys. Um, that's kind of a, a thing. Like I'm running fast. I apologize. Do you guys have any questions about any of the tools or anything that that I use during the uh, the tracking? Yeah, I got one. Yeah. Uh, how well maintained is that OC framework site as far as the site they're on? I mean, is it that I've used it a few times, and it seems like most of them are products for Phoenix, but they it, don't always seem like replicable sites. The uh, the the OSINT framework basically has a, a bunch of at least 
trial level stuff. Uh, you may have to sign up for, for some of the sites. Um, I know the guy that runs it. Uh, if you happen to know of uh, a bad link, um, that it probably used to be good and they, they changed something or, or went to a, a software-based uh, you know payment thing. Um, Jay Nordine uh, is his handle on Twitter. Uh, you can shoot him a message and he'll, he'll pop them off of there. Um, he does updates probably um, every month or so and tries to, to fry the, the bad sites um, and add the new ones up there. So he's, he's pretty uh, consistent at, at rolling updates about, about once a month. So, um, but yeah, let him know if you see a dead, dead link, he'll, he'll fry it. Uh, any other questions, anybody? Yeah. So what was, what was your motivation behind sort of tracking this from, from beginning to end? Honestly, it's, it's just practice. Um, I love doing OSINT stuff. Um, Digital forensics is is my my bread and butter, um, but doing the investigative stuff around it is, is something I love doing. So when situations like these, um, I've tried to do this with um, a lot of the, I think it was the Ohio State campus incident, um, the guy out in Ohio that did the the shootings and was putting them on Facebook. Like I've tracked most of those uh, over the years, but. Um, it's just, again, not something I really want to put on my blog and, you know, be up here talking about. Um, it's just this is one of those that I, I even though there was the officers that died, you know, in, in the story, um, if I can give people tools to help track these guys and, you know, maybe send some tips in, it kind of becomes worth it. So that's, that's, that was my motivation. <laughs> Loving OSINT and trying to get bad guys. Um, basically just practice. Um, if, you, if you do OSINT investigations on a routine basis, you kind of get into different patterns. Um, now, I'm not saying that's, that's a bad thing. Methodology is good, especially from a forensic standpoint. You know, I have to follow certain methods to, to get my end results and have them be valid. Um, but when you get into the same routine because you know a person's email and address sometimes you follow the same path and you, you get kind of the same stuff all the time these investigations because they're like live fire I, I tend to do random stuff and in the, the process of doing the the random things I usually pick up new tools that I'm not usually you know grabbing you know stuff that I may discover just because I'm Google searching how I could figure out something totally random about something I saw in a video clip so that, that's the that's the uh, the reason that I do these kind of things also Any other questions? All right. Thank you very much for listening.